half in the bag. You know what's really great? Old Star Trek. Huh, who would have thought a book where the X-Men meets Star Trek The Next Generation characters would be so well written? This must be in the upper echelon of literature. Speaking of Star Trek The Next Generation, I recently saw the trailer for Star Trek Picard Season 2. Boy oh boy does it look like shit. Of course they dredge up Q. It just looks terrible. I don't even know why they made a Season 2 of Star Trek Picard. The first season sucked so bad. Who's watching season two even? You know, I read an article that said Paramount Plus did a survey of all of its viewers and only 1% of its active subscribers said they were interested in a Picard season two. And with Star Trek Discovery season three, they counted up all the viewers and only 6,000 people viewed Star Trek Discovery season three. Not one episode, mind you, the entire season, 6,000 views. Jesus, I wish they would just stop making these new crappy Star Trek series. You know what's really great? Old Star Trek, like TOS, TNG, VOY, DS9, and even ENT. ENT stands for Enterprise, it's shorthand. Those are all shorthands for the TV series. You know, I was thinking of doing another Star Trek The Next Generation video with Rich, but how about this, Jay? Why don't you do it with me? You can watch every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation and rank your favorite ones. You know which ones are my favorite? Yesterday's Enterprise, Disaster, The Best of Both Worlds, Part 1 and 2, Tapestry, The Inner Light, Future Imperfect, Conundrum, of course, Rice, Hero Worship, The Pegasus, First Born, Time Zero, Part 1 and 2, those are pretty good. The Outcast, Cause of the Night, both stories are for David Hey, Mike. You want to talk about a surreal, violent, obscure art house horror film with me? That instead of Star Trek? Well, I'd love to, Jay. Let's talk all day about this disgusting, putrid, uncomfortable, filthy movie. This depiction is dangerous. Come on, ain't it? I'm cutting it. After viewing a strangely familiar video nasty, Enid, a film censor, sets out to solve the past mystery of her sister's disappearance, embarking on a quest that dissolves the line between fiction and reality. Well, Jay, I won't ask what you thought of this film. No one has to. <laughs> uh, and let me throw in a quick backstory here. I caught the trailer on Voodoo. The poster intrigued me. Uh, it's a lady. Uh, addressed in the 80s style very conservatively on the upper half of the poster. The bottom half, she's holding an axe. Censor! And that it's striking image in a way posters usually aren't anymore. Correct. That when you're scrolling through like iTunes or yeah. Voodoo or whatever, yeah, it's that, just close-ups of Bruce Willis's face. Every thumbnail is just Bruce or Willis. Or Liam Neeson. Or Liam Neeson. Someone's punching somebody. But yeah, I was intrigued by the poster. It had the, I don't know, I think the font was 80s, Carpenter-esque, Halloween-ish. Stranger Things, throwback font. What's this? Watch the trailer. Very interesting. This looks right up Jay's alley. <laughs> this looks like he made this movie. <laughs> or this movie was made for him. Mm -hmm. So I watch the film, and then I take an airplane. I fly to Las Vegas to place my bet on whether or not Jay has seen this film. The sports book, everybody, it was a buzz. Yeah. with activity. Um, the odds were 900 trillion to one that uh, Jay has watched this film. It just came out, by the way. I right. should point that out. You were already, it, it just been it, out for like a day. It came out uh, two days. Yeah. One day it was on streaming video. And, and it wasn't, adver obviously it wasn't advertised. They don't advertise the movies anymore. You gotta go find them. And so I was like, Jay has seen this movie. Jay, Jay have you seen, Sen before I could say set, he goes, of course I've seen Sensor. <laughs> Um, and so I say, why don't we talk about Censor? Well, Mike, I thought this movie was terrible. <laughs> no, I loved this movie. Uh, uh, visually, it's, it's fantastic. The cinematography, the lighting. Um, you can call it a throwback, I guess. I mean, it's clearly influenced by a lot of Italian 70s, 80s stuff with the, uh, mm. the, the garish lighting. Um, 
But it has a story that holds your interest. It's not just weird visuals that get tiresome. Right. And uh, well, that's where I will slightly disagree. Um, real quick, I I really liked this movie. I respected it. I appreciated it. Many things I liked about it. Again, this is a, a you movie, and not so much a me movie, but it kind of I kind of fell over the line a little. Hang on. So Jay, before we get into our discussion of Censor, we'd like to first say this will be filled with spoilers, which may uh, affect your enjoyment of the film, but- We're gonna ruin it all. Yes, uh, and, and so we're gonna say right now, I would recommend the movie, Jay. Strong recommendation, yeah. Okay, okay, um, and before we start talking about it, this is probably, we should probably do this all the time. <laughs> I would imagine, right? Um, because it, in talking about how the movie is structured, it may spoil your enjoyment as things develop in the movie. So yeah. heads up, we're gonna talk about Censor, a movie we, we both enjoy, so maybe watch it first and then come back and watch our review. Or don't, do whatever you'd like. And of course, Jay would recommend this film because it's a weird, perverted horror film. The film is about our main character Enid plays a British censor during the era of the video nasty. Yes. Uh, which we'll discuss. Jay will tell you all about this. He knows more about <laughs> I'll tell this you way more me. than you need to know. Um, but this is in the conservative 80s, the, the Margaret Thatcher era, the, the satanic panic. That was um, the kind of the, the U.S. equivalent. The, that was the U.S. Yeah. equivalent. Brit British called moral it moral panic. Moral, yeah, the, the 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 age of Tipper Gore and the, um, the you know parental advisories, and we got to start rating things. Yeah. And um, the rating system came about. The censorship came about. We're talking about scenes that are really horrific and leave nothing to the imagination: mutilations of bodies, cannibalism, gang rape. That is what a video nasty is. But uh, uh, our main character plays a British censor who has a troubled past, and, and uh, it's a mixture of her mental breakdown and um, uh, the art imitating life, and... Uh, the line blurring between what she sees as reality and what's movie or fantasy right. or horror. Yes, and, and in a Lynchian kind of disturbing way. Uh, the well, it reminded me of uh, uh, Enemy, the Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Specifically, because that's a movie where you're like the mystery is so sort of bizarre and surreal. Which in that movie, it's he rents a movie and sees himself in the movie basically, and he gets obsessed with tracking down like what is this, who is this person, mm. and this is similar where uh, the the main character she has like vague memories of her and her sister in the woods when they were little, and she doesn't know what happened. The sister's been missing for like whatever it is a decade, fifteen years now. Um, but then she's watching a movie that she's supposed to rate or decide what to cut and censor. And the movie mirrors her memories of her and her sister in the woods. And so she gets tangled up in trying to figure out who made this movie. And it just, yeah, uh, it, it keeps your interest in terms of the mystery just because it's so kind of slow moving, but really like atmospheric and surreal. Speaking of Jake Gyllenhaal, I got some Zodiac vibes. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the, I think it was the setting the, the, that kind of dingy, disgusting 80s office. Yeah, where that, they're not, it's not Stranger Things where everything's like, 80s, yeah. you remember how nostalgic and wonderful the 80s are? This is like, no, the 80s were gross. Here it is. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you could portray uh, the, the style, the fashion, you know, a lot of things were gross about the 80s. The, 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 the treatment of women uh, is, is brought up in this a lot. Brutalization of women. Oh, the, sure. The, Kind of people aggressively hitting on her, the the the, the sleazy movie producer, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, that sort of, you know, the sexism of the '80s, and and and, but also visually how it's depicted as like the smoky, disgusting, dingy. I, I just got that newsroom feel of um, Zodiac, and yeah. wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal also in? Was it Nightcrawler? Yeah. That also kind of similar mm -hmm. vibes. Sort of seedy and yeah, disgusting greenish tint to everything. Yeah, and, and that had a video, video angle to it a little oh, bit. Yeah. He would go out and film. Ah! 
But yeah, our main character, uh, she has a past where her sister went missing when she was younger. It's all very ambiguous in terms of like what happened, what the parents really know. Yes. I, I kind of got that vibe. Um, and her obsession with finding her sister. Uh, and, and that's what the trailer leads you in. Okay. See, and, I didn't even watch the trailer. So okay. I know. I, I, watching the trailer, I'm like, I love this. I love how this stage is set. A, a, a British censor who's censoring horror films uh, kind of gets wrapped up in this whole storyline of trying to find her missing sister. And she sees an actress in a horror film who she believes to be her missing sister, all grown up, mm -hmm. held hostage by the film company yeah. forced to act the, in cheesy the, B movies. The girl in the movie is being tortured and tormented, so that must be real. And yeah. she goes down this track of trying to track down these sleazy filmmakers. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I'm like, oh, I, I, I kind of like that premise. That's probably really not her sister. That would be too lame, that kind of plot of her uncovering and rescuing her sister. But, but that narrative part of my brain wanted that answer. But then, you know, halfway through the movie, I mean, it's not like your typical structured movie where, you know, I was expecting 30 minute mark is when she discovers her sister in the movie, but it doesn't come until like an hour later. Yeah. And it's very slow to it's, build its, it's atmosphere. And yeah, it's, and it's more of like a character study because you see her yeah. with her parents and like mm -hmm. her parents just want to move on. They try and they show her the right. uh, death certificate or like, we just want to end this. Yeah. And she's just so determined that her sister's still out there somewhere. Yeah. So after a while, I began to realize I was more focused on her mental decay mm -hmm. and, and spiral downward into, into madness, basically. Um, and I was happy without having a clear outcome of the premise. I was happy with an ambiguous ending. It has a, yeah, it's ambiguous, but at the same time, uh, What's literally happening is pretty clear cut, but it's ambiguous about the sister angle. Yeah. Which which I like. Right, right. I've got this feeling that's Nina. Oh, my sister. There's a lot of subjects the movie's trying to tackle. You know, it, it, past trauma. Uh, there, she keeps doing a thing with oh, scratching yeah. her nail. That was like the most horrifying thing in the movie. She's like scratching, like... If you've ever had a hangnail or if you've ever ripped off yeah. skin next to your, your fingernail. And clearly that's like a tick yeah. that's like surfacing. Um, but she has some kind of past trauma that's that's buried. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of parallels with, you know, editing out things from a movie. It's, yeah. it's a very metaphorical, you know. And it's, uh, yeah, she mentions that at one point, uh, like the idea of like editing out memories. And uh, there's a... Because uh, again, this takes place during the video nasty era, the censorship era, and there's a, uh, a story of a guy that killed his wife and daughter. Is that what it was? He, he ate his wife's face. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah. He 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 ate her face, which parallels a movie that their censor board let slip past. Right. So now all these people are outraged and blaming them. Letting people see that disgusting film, you should be ashamed of yourself. The, the guy says he doesn't remember doing it. And she's like, well, how could you not remember doing that? So you have the parallel between her missing memories and the missing memories of someone that they're blaming the violent movies on, yeah. like all that, that. It's ironic she has a past memory that she has removed from her brain and she's the one removing stuff from films. Lost Why do you think he can't remember? Could be basic trauma, brain, it sort of shuts it out. But what really happened, she didn't really kill her sister with an ax, uh, I assume. Maybe she did. Maybe she did, but then, they, yeah, they kept showing, like, they kept showing a man in the woods, like, disgusting, creepy man who mm -hmm. kind of paralleled the Beast Man character. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, is, is she inventing the past memory of her sister based on what she's watching? It, it's never really clear cut. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's kind of morally ambiguous. This isn't just, uh, I mean, Clearly, I think the filmmakers are uh, uh, against the side of the British censors and censoring movies and everything. Sure. But her being exposed to all this stuff, to have to take notes and censor it, is sort of what helps spiral her mental state out of control. So I like that ambiguity there of not just being so kind of clear-cut and simplistic. Now you say filmmakers, filmmaker, Prano Bailey Bond, British... Filmmaker. This is her first feature length film. She did a short film called Nasty, which is a shorter version of this movie. It's like, a, I think it won awards and I think it was quite a while ago, several years. 
but then now this is a feature length version of that. Yeah. Uh, only 84 minutes too. Yeah, that was kind of a nice, I mean, that's perfect like for this story. Right. If it had gone on too long, you'd start to feel that that uh, pacing, but the uh, they do a stylistic thing, which I didn't notice until it had already happened, which is in the third act. Very, very gradually, the aspect ratio over the course of like 15 minutes starts to go into that four by three, which is, of course, when she's watching these movies on VHS, that's kind of how she's viewing them is four by three. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, but it happens so, I didn't even, like at one point, it's just like, oh, when did that happen? Mm -hmm. So I went and rewound it, and then like fast rewind, you see it go like whoop, but it's it's so gradual, and it's like that that ratcheting of tension, mm -hmm. that uh, losing that grip on reality, closing in, closing in. Like all, it, it represents all these things. It's not just like a pointless stylistic thing. No, her slowly going into the movie, spiraling downward, and and entering a movie in her own head. And I think that's more when they start to introduce like the 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 more kind of stylish stylish lighting, the red lighting and stuff is more in the is this real or is this not kind of aspects of the movie. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a very specific point in this movie where it takes a sharp turn, to where, where it becomes very clear what's happening. And it's, it's the moment she's, she's become obsessed with finding this actress, Alice something. Lee? Who's in, in the, this film by this director, who's this very mysterious, enigmatic, uh, the, uh, an auteur of cheap, <laughs> Cheap schlock. Yeah, and there's, <laughs> so she knows the producer. The producer stopped by the the film censor offices, and so she finds his house. She shows up at his house. She, it's raining. She looks like a crazy person, <laughs> and she, she's trying to track down this actress. And, I'm, and he was hitting on her earlier, so he assumed she came over for a yes, for yes. A, a little something, a little yes. nightcap. Right, and he offers her scotch, and he's he's a bit of a sleaze bag. Who would have thought? <laughs> a film producer. The sleazy dirt bag. <laughs> Anyways, he, uh, uh, he offers her a drink, and he thinks, yeah, she's there for uh, ulterior motives, but really, she's there for information. And then a struggle occurs, and the one moment that took me way out of the movie happens here. I guess we're in spoilers, so. But that's the point. Oh my God. He didn't die in a conventional manner. He died in a silly B-movie manner. Yeah, a, yeah. I guess own. if that was the point, it kind of took me out because it was, especially at that point at in first, the movie. In, in hindsight, it, yeah, it, it, was, it was kind of perfect because then then it's like that reality shatters. Mm -hmm. And it, it did, you know, did that really happen? I guess so. Or if it did, did it happen like that? Yeah. It's a very silly visual. And at that point of the movie, I guess, yeah, like you said, kind of in hindsight, it makes sense. But when it happened, I was like, oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but even still, they shoot it in like in his profile, and clearly the award is on the other side of his face. <laughs> they didn't even, you, uh, you could make a prosthetic or uh, a, a, an appliance, just cut the award in half, stick it in his mouth. Yeah. Easy peasy, right? Um, but they shot it like the cheap way, <laughs> like you would do with a knife. Like yeah. you have a real, all, all we have is a real knife. Well, put it on the side of someone's head and film this way. And yeah, that's that's how like a B movie would shoot it. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so it was very clearly on the other side of his head. And I thought, <laughs> okay, this is it. It didn't fit the tone. Mm -hmm. And that's when that's that moment when everything started to fall apart. And that start, might be when I'd have to go back and look. That might be when the aspect ratio starts to yeah. change. It's right in, around there somewhere. I was wondering if you had anything else on this actress. What's gonna happen to her? Well, that's top secret. Yeah, so it didn't didn't really, you know, it's a little slow. It's not conventionally structured as as, a, as like a as it was portrayed in the trailer, like an investigation movie. She's gonna find her missing sister. Oh, I'm sure it they make more, it look super exciting in the trailer. Yeah, more of a character <laughs> study about. Um, and commentary on censorship, yeah. um, and how I don't know. Is it, it almost if it is an anti-censorship movie, it almost is self-defeating <laughs> because the censor who's exposed to horrific images ends up 
going crazy. That's what I was saying. It's, it's sort of a contradiction, but I, I like that ambiguity. And it's a, to me, it's more like, because it is a character study, it feels like it's about this specific person mm -hmm. more so than it's trying to say anything about censorship as a whole. Because all the, I mean, all the other characters that work in the censor board are just doing their jobs and normal yeah. people. Because you have some of the other characters, like there's that dude who he's like, I could be working in academia instead of doing this trash. Yeah. And, blah, 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 you know. and so, yeah, clearly... It, it can affect people differently. And then they have the story about the guy who ripped the face off and ate it and then blamed the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's an open-ended question, I think, is do, can movie violence, uh, now it's sort of transformed into like video games, like first person shooters. And oh yeah. That whole, that whole topic, does, does that desensitize younger people? I, I, I do not believe in censorship I do believe in rating systems, though. I think that's helpful. Sure. Uh, you don't want uh, an eight-year-old watching a violent R-rated movie. I, right. I do believe in some ways that can warp perceptions of reality for younger people. And that's why we have rating systems. I think that's a, a fair compromise. But, but that's, yeah, that's a different thing. That's the difference between, uh, you know, the us and the, the UK at that time. Right. Because the UK was doing actual... They were taking movies and just ripping scenes out of them. They were, I mean, that's the video nasty era. Um, they didn't have a First Amendment. Got our freedom of speech. They were, yeah. The, I think it was a list of like 72 movies altogether. We have some of them here. So I have a handful of them right here. Not all of them, of course. There was 72, but it was, the list was 72 movies that were deemed uh, obscene and pulled from shelves, pulled from video store shelves. Uh, and then there was a secondary list of other movies that were not uh, classified as obscene, but were still uh, told to be pulled off of the shelves as well. Mm. So these, these are some of the ones that were legally classified. Uh, they were certified as obscene. And banned. And banned, yeah. Like, okay. In 1982, under the Obscene Publications Act, Police seized 22,000 cassettes in the metropolitan area alone. And that's there's that scene in the movie where she goes to the video store and the guy's got the, he's got like video nasties kind of hidden under the counter and that was really happening and people got fines for that, they got arrested for that. Jay, can I say I'm shocked you own so many video nasties. <laughs> I find it surprising. Some of them I suppose make sense, but some are a little, uh, uh, I mean not make sense, like I don't think they should have been banned, but where it's like, yeah, they're pretty grotesque. Island of the Dead. But then you have like Evil Speak, which has Clint Howard in it, and he, he conjures up Satan through a computer. Why, well, it's the Driller Killer. Or we Driller watched, Killer. You see footage this. of that in the movie. We watched this on Best of the Worst, didn't we? No, we didn't. Oh. We watched uh, Nail Gun Massacre. That might be what oh, you're thinking of. I think we might have watched Driller Killer. I would doubt we had ever watched it because it's actually pretty boring. But that oh. you see that in uh, Censor, that's the drill going into yeah. the head. Mm -hmm. the I used drill. a clip from it because that movie's public domain. So I used a clip from it in our Trover Saves the Universe Hail Satan ad. The Hail Satan channel. All Satan, all the time. Scary movies, documentaries. But it's funny because that's the, like, the only violent shot in that whole movie. The rest of the movie is just a bunch of uh, New York hipsters hanging out in a loft. But then there's other ones that are genuinely pretty grotesque that I don't, I can't justify why, why I own, like Cannibal Holocaust. It's unbelievable. It's, it's horrible. I can't understand the reason for such cruelty. Are there's Italian horror All these films? Italian cannibal ferox, Italian cannibal movies. Um, I Spit on Your Grave, like the most notorious kind of rape revenge movie. Yeah. I don't know, you probably haven't seen this movie. I'm assuming you've seen this poster before. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a pretty iconic poster. You know who this is? Who? Who the model for the poster is? It was Demi Moore. Really? Yeah. Little fun facts. I have never seen a video nasty. I wouldn't. I have far too much. But how, how can you judge on a video nasty? Oh, You've never seen one. I actually don't need to see visually what I know is in that film. There was an episode, you know, the, the great British show, The Young Ones. Yes, of course. A, a wonderful show that's filled with yelling and, and destruction. Uh, but there was a video nasty episode on that. <laughs> it's a video nasty! A punk band on the episode performs a song about the video nasties. <laughs> Nasty. 
So yeah, it was interesting to see a movie. I've never seen that before. I've seen movies set during like Satanic Panic, and but the the UK kind of video nasty era was, yeah. it was unique. It was new. It was some, a different kind of setting where it's in the 80s, but it's not like a glossy, nostalgic right. thing. It's a dirty 80s. R riding on the the London tube. Yeah. And the disgusting people. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, um, it reminded me of like 80s Times Square, you know, it, yeah. kind of like everything's gross and dangerous. And <laughs> In court, a solicitor for the director of public prosecutions called the material an extravaganza of gory violence capable of depraving and corrupting those who watched it. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this film. I, I don't have too much more to say about it. Uh, no, it's 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 a slow burn. Uh, I love those super slow kind of character studies. There was a movie that came out earlier this year that it reminded me a lot of called Saint Maud. Have you seen that? I have not watched it. That's a A twenty four movie. I was looking forward to watching that. It that had a, a really night. it had a really fucked up release where it wasn't like in theaters and on VOD at the same right. time. It was direct to, I think, stars. Where it's like you had to have stars to see it. That was the only place it was. Um, but that's uh, both of these movies are like top movies for me this year. They're both really, really good. Hmm. If you're into that kind of like slow character study, descent into madness kind of stuff. Hmm. Um, that one, yeah, same with this too, where it just has that, that slow, creeping atmosphere where it really gets under your skin. You know, I like that movie with Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. <laughs> what? Why Age of Ultron? Because it sounds stupider. <laughs> I'm making an under the skin joke. Oh. Oh, oh, oh I see what you're doing. Oh, you finally caught on! <laughs> That's another great movie, Under the Skin. But anyway. No, I love the style of this movie. The, uh, the They show actual movies, like like I mentioned Driller Killer. I think there's some other ones in there. But then the stuff that they created for the movie is very, like, it's a mix of, like, Evil Dead and Italian stuff with the, with the lighting. I thought that was really well done. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, really well well put together movie. A lot of attention to detail, uh, but not real thick on the murder mystery plot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is until it isn't. It kind of changes out of dime. Yeah. I, I I really like the ending though when she's gone full cracked, and uh, I think it's foreshadowed in the one of the boxes she picks up. It's like. So something like a, a, a wonderful, happy place, or there's a there's a box, a VHS box that mimics the end shot of the oh, movie okay. with the parents. I think I missed that. That very end shot where it's like all scenic and perfect, and then it keeps intercutting. You get those, so. those glitches of VHS with her screaming for help that right. made my fucking skin crawl. Yeah, it's yeah. It's so perfectly done. So that's where it becomes like it's almost surreal, where it's like, is this a loop? Is this all playing out in her head? even the parts in reality, and who knows. And is the implication that she did murder her sister with an axe when she was a kid. We don't know. And the parents are, are happy to cover it up. Or they don't know. It could or be. they don't know, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and she's, and that's why she became a film censor. She was traumatized by that incident when she was a child. I guess we don't know specifically what happened, but hey, not every every movie can be Fast and the Furious Nine. I was promised that was going to be in space. <laughs> Is I, that true? I remember seeing articles saying the next Fast and Furious movie will be in space, and I thought, God damn, that's so awesome! I may watch that one. <laughs> like we're bringing a bunch of uh, expensive uh, sports cars up to the International Space Station, you know. My, uh, Elon Musk is testing out his, uh, his new uh, space car. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, you got Vin Diesel driving it out in the outside of the space station, smashing it up. And I, I mean, maybe they, they take the cars way up into like the upper, upper atmosphere, you know, and then they drive them out, you know. Maybe where the cars are in a big plane in like super low orbit and they, they have like oxygen masks on and they jump the cars out of the thing. I was so excited. <laughs> but I don't. I didn't see any space. <laughs> well, you probably want to save that. I'm still wondering why Paul Walker left the movies. When is he coming back? He's kind of in space. <laughs> He's up in heaven with the Jesus. 
people think that I create horror. Horror is already out there. So, Jay, would you recommend uh, Sensor? Absolutely. Of course you would. Unless you're not into this kind of slow character study stuff, but I, I, I really loved it. Yeah, I, I would recommend it as well. Uh, knowing full well when you go into it, it's not going to be the murder mystery the trailer promised. It's going to be a sit back and enjoy the creepy atmospheric kind of film, mm -hmm. which aren't always my favorites. It has um, to have just enough story to keep keep it moving. Yeah. Or it doesn't get too lost in abstractions. Right. And that and that comes across in a lot of the, you know, the reviews or comments, you know. Great movie until the fucking ending when it sucked. You know, that's sort of Oh thing. really? Do oh, people yeah, not yeah. like the uh, ending to this? Yeah. Well, because oh. it's it's ambiguous. Yeah. I, I don't I think... feel like it gives you enough. I mean, I guess if you're really invested in the sister stuff. But I think it's not really, it ends up not really being about her so much. I so. know, Jay. I know. And I don't put myself in the dumb people category, but dumb people want a conclusion to a story. Smart people like subtext and character building and maybe even an ambiguous ending that leaves you thinking, right? And I'm not generalizing, but I'm generalizing. <laughs> um, so the dummies want an answer. I guess that's another way. Who to killed the sister? And, and that's me. That's exactly what I said. Who killed the sister? <laughs> but then my smart half of my brain said, ah, that was a, that was a lovely film that, that said a lot of things. That's another way to compare stuff. it to Zodiac, too. It yeah. says things and stuff. Because, yeah, that's a movie, as you're going along, you're like, oh, this is a great mystery. And then you remember, like, oh, wait, they never solved this. Yeah. <laughs> How's this movie going to end? It's like the James Cameron's Titanic. I forgot the ship's got to hit an iceberg soon. I'm so wrapped up in this love story, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, the ship sinks. Yeah, so that's uh, that sensor. Oh shit, we did the whole discussion and I forgot to turn on the smoke machine. Why is there a smoke machine in my fantasy? Hollow Pursuits, and of course, Chain of Command parts one and two. God, there's so many good episodes. So Jay, are you ready to start watching every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation so we could make a hundred videos where we talk about them? Wait, don't you want to know how the book ends? <laughs> <laughs>